In today's video, I talk about how to overcome stage fright and develop amazing stage presence in three steps. Hey, it's your old pal Liz. Welcome to Mind, Body and Soul Singing, where I help singers like you and me too obtain physical, emotional and spiritual freedom in our voices. So before I share with you the three steps, I just wanna start with saying that I am a very shy, introverted human being with a lot of anxiety, but I am an incredible performer and I have overcome my stage fright. So if I can do it, so can you. I also want to say that I still experience anxiety before my shows, even though I've been doing it for 10 years and that's okay. It just looks a lot different than it used to. And um, the steps that I'm going to share with you today are all of the steps that I have taken. And some of them I still do take to take care of myself so that I can be the best performer possible. Hey, so it's the next day and I'm uploading this video, but I had to jump back on here really quickly and tell you these two very important nuggets of information about performing. Number one is your anxiety uh, is not there to hurt you. It actually is there to help you. Anxiety gets pumped through the body to help with motivation, pushing forward, fighting or fleeing. So it'll give you that passionate juice that you need. So that's another way to reframe anxiety. One time I experimented with taking a Valium, which is a medicine that will uh, help with anxiety. Mm -mm. When I took that Valium, I was like white bread. I was boring. I wasn't anxious. I had no feelings. And then I realized, wow, Liz, your anxiety is important. It is your fire. It is your fuel. It's okay to have it. Harness it. Embrace it. It will light you up. And the other thing I wanted to add really quickly is I really highly recommend not drinking and not drugging um, to help you through your performance. These things become crutches and it actually disconnects us from our authentic self. And alcohol and drugs actually just make, I don't know, our voices and our bodies uh, not as good as they could be. Uh, without those substances. So yeah, having a beer before the show, whatever, that's probably fine. Um, but I've always, always, even as an addict to myself, who's actually quit all of this stuff, um, I've never used drugs and alcohol to uh, cope with my anxiety and my stage fright. Uh, I've never used drugs and alcohol as a means to have great stage presence because I know that's a crutch and I do not want to rely on substances to get me there. So you can see how I perform that is all as a sober individual. We can get high off of our own supply. So I really just thought it was important to add that into this video. Mwah. I'm about to play trout stock. What do you think? <laughs> Step one, get to know yourself as a performer. So, in the beginning, performing for me was very difficult. I would get up onto that stage and I would be like a deer in headlights. I remember one performance where I had been rehearsing with my band for an entire year and I go to introduce my band and I forget my drummer's name. I had to turn around and ask my drummer, what's your name? because I was that anxious, I was that nervous. So start performing at home. Um, you can perform to your teddy bears, uh, whatever. So, you know, set everything up, put on the outfit that you, you will perform in. Um, I dressed up today to show you uh, one of my stage looks. For me, this is what I like. Um, I love theatrics, I love sparkles, I love color. 
Um, I love extravagant theatrical outfits, so I dress accordingly. Um, but this isn't for everybody. So my best advice is to think about who are your influences? Um, who do you love to listen to and watch them perform? What are they wearing? What are they doing? Um, and be influenced, take inspiration from the singers and the performers that you love and dress in that style. As you can see, I have these sparkles. I call these my tear sparkles because actually I have been performing more sad songs lately and I personally was nervous about that. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna really own this. I'm gonna put on my tear sparkles. And I even told my audience, like I am the sad queen and we are totally embracing this. And this actually, really helped me and I'm coming out with a solo album where I am very sad, I'm very angry, I'm very emotional and this look will probably be um, what you will see um, for the photos that I will take to support the record, the videos and the stage presence. So when you are performing at home in your bedroom I would also recommend setting up a mirror and or a camera and film yourself and or watch yourself. Um, I think the best performers are emotive performers that are communicating. Um, so for an example, when you're practicing your stage presence, use your hands, use your eyes, Use your face, emotion. So when I'm working with my students, oftentimes, you know, when they're in the beginning stages of performing, they'll look something like this, which I did too. Maybe they'll be putting their hands in their pockets. And I... Nothing wrong with that. That's where I started too. But if this is you, notice it. Let me show you the shift. So filming yourself and or putting a mirror in front of you, start to communicate. Use your hands, use your face, sing with your heart. This will help with stage fright. You're doing things with your hands. You're communicating with your audience. You are singing from your heart. Even if it doesn't even feel real at first, just fake it until you make it. So let me demonstrate. And I, I will always love you. Will always love you. So right away, I'm practicing this at home, communicating, using my body, using my face, singing from my heart, really communicating with you. And this will help with the stage fright because it's almost like I've developed this sort of routine that I move through, you know? So I'm not getting up on stage and just shoving my hands in my pockets and just singing. I am incorporating my entire body into it. it actually it's like almost a role that i can even play that i can hide behind if i'm too scared so i highly recommend this it's totally okay to develop a persona um so for me the persona in the beginning was called merrimack jane because my first band was analog heart and we have a song called merrimack jane um so I was, I became Merrimack Jane. Like I became this character. And for me, it felt right. It felt natural. It felt authentic to me. And that's all that matters. It was something that I could put on and get up on that stage and put on this like power suit, put on this persona you know, I'm no longer Liz Bills, the shy, introverted girl. 
I am this extroverted, powerful, Merrimack Jane, sassy, silly, passionate. But with all of that being said, I am not always that way on stage. And um, this took me a long time to be comfortable with. But as a human being who is an introvert and an extrovert, there are both sides to me. And sometimes the introverted girl will come out on stage, oh no, or is it, oh yes. So to embrace wherever you're at will help with stage fright and anxiety and stage presence because you are embracing who you are um, and not resisting it or not adding layers of fear and on top of that. So sometimes I'll go on stage and I'll feel more introverted, I'll feel quieter, I'll feel more vulnerable, I'll feel more raw. And these days often I'm actually able to tell my audience that, how I'm feeling. Um, this may not always feel right, but if it feels good to you, you can do that. Um, and so by allowing all of the pieces of me and seeing them as beautiful and worthy and good enough have really helped me to overcome stage fright and to have great stage presence because um, I'm not forcing anything. I don't have any expectations. I'm just showing up as I am. It took me two years to break free and to perform on stage the way that I could perform at home by myself. It took me two years. So look at this as the long game. And you are practicing this skill. So be patient with yourself, be compassionate, be understanding. Just getting up onto that stage and performing is a win. Do you know how many performers at heart never actually perform because it's that scary, never actually share their music. There are a lot of people out there that can't even get up onto that stage. So just getting up there and doing it, no matter what state you are in, is means to celebrate. And this will help you on your journey. Um, it will help you feel like you can do it because you are supporting yourself. Um, and you are an ally to yourself and you are your biggest fan. And every time you get up onto that stage and you're like a deer in headlights or you forget your lines or that note came out squeaky or you know whatever it may be, I would say to even expect that and say that's part of the process and I need to fail over and over and over again because I am learning and I am growing. And this is how we learn and grow by doing things over and over and over and over. So getting to know yourself as a performer also means getting up onto that stage over and over and over again because um, stage fright and stage presence can only really be nurtured and worked through by actually doing the thing. I mean, you can also do it at home. You can ease your way in. You can perform in front of a really close friend or something like that. Slowly ease your way up if your anxiety is really strong. Um, but also, you may surprise yourself if you haven't done it yet. Like once you're up there, you may surprise yourself and realize, wow, this is not actually as bad as I thought it would be. One of the reasons I dress like this is also because um, my old guitarist told me this and it always stuck with me. He was like, Liz, I think you should dress in a way that when you walk into the venue, people know you're the performer. They know by just looking at you that you are the singer, you are the performer. And this is another reason I dress like that, like this, because that resonates with me. And so I am stepping into this role. I am really taking it seriously, or am I? 
maybe not so seriously. I'm childlike, I'm silly, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Hmm. Number two, book that show. I remember in the beginning, I held off for a while booking shows until the band was ready. And I remember booking the shows and not being excited at all. I actually was terrified. I did not want to perform. I did, but I did not. Um, so my best advice is to book that show. Um, it could look different depending on where you're at. Um, so I would say book a show at a bar or at a music venue or in your friend's living room or your own living room or in a barn or uh, maybe live stream feels best. Uh, and I would invite everyone that you feel will support you and uplift you and make you feel good and safe. Number three creating safety. I want to start with a tool that I use that I was naturally using, but I didn't realize what I was doing until Ruby Rose Fox from Muscle Music. I'll link it above and below in case you're interested. Um, this is what Ruby Rose Fox suggested to do. Um, so as performers, we are what's called nervous system tuners. And this is um, scientifically backed. So what that means is we are magic. We are wizards. We are sorceresses. <laughs> but this is scientific. Um, so some of the science behind this is, did you know that when a singer goes up on the stage and the audience is looking up at the singer, everyone's hearts start beating at the same time. Isn't that wild? That's magic, right? That's crazy. But they've done studies and that's true. Wow. Getting the chills thinking about it. So warm eyes. What is that? What is nervous system tuning? What are you talking about? All right. So let me give you an example. So say your friend calls you and she's crying. She's so upset. Something really horrible happened. Her nervous system is dysregulated. And you start to calm her down. You tell her comforting things. You soothe her. And you know what you're doing when you're doing that? You are tuning her nervous system to match yours. She's calling you to regulate her nervous system. And then maybe by the end of the call, she's feeling a little better. This is what we do on stage. And warm eyes is this. So when you go into your venue and you have that stage fright, you go into the venue and the best that you can, you start looking in people's eyes. If that's too much, look at their foreheads and you smile. Just a little one. I'll do it for you right now. You just look around like this. You're sending love out to your audience right away. And I feel like this is also emitting the sort of powerful energy of, I know who I am. I love me. And I'm telling you right now that I love you too and that you love me. If you're like nowhere near this, that's okay. Just practice it. Fake it until you make it. Mm. Warm eyes. And when I get up onto that stage, I tell my audience how to feel. When my audience is looking up to, at me, they want to know how to feel. You know, when I go to a show, I go and I look at the performer and I'm ready to feel things. You know, um, if the performer messes up and is like clearly really agitated and upset about it, I, as the audience member, become agitated and upset too. Um, if the performer messes up on stage and laughs, 
I laugh too, not at them, but with them. The performer tells me, the audience member, how to feel. That is so powerful to harness, isn't it? I used to perform. I would go to shows and I would look at the audience with desperation and I would ask, do you like me? Do you love me? Am I good enough? And you know, giving them the power. Um, but no, 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 we're not doing that anymore. No, no, no. <laughs> it's okay if we do, love and compassion, love and compassion, but we notice it and we keep trying to pivot. Um, and instead, when we get up onto that stage, we give warm eyes, look into their eyes or, you know, into their foreheads <laughs> and I radiate out love and I've gotten to the point in my career where I don't give a fuck if you like me because I love me. And there is nothing anyone could say or do to change that. And this is the energy I am sending out. And this is the energy I've cultivated over time. Sometimes I get up on stage and I feel uncomfortable and I mess up. And when I mess up, I mentioned it before, I don't say anything. I don't do, I don't go, sorry. Uh, I don't even do anything. I just move on <laughs> and I congratulate myself. I think, wow, Liz, look how you handled that. That was really cool. Like nobody would have known. And if people do know, sometimes I'll even laugh about it. I won't take myself too seriously and I'll allow the audience to not take any of this too seriously either. And so it really gives me the space to not be perfect, but to be real. Um, and I've even gone as far as talking about this on stage. Um, and that's really helped me to feel safe on stage, to be exactly where I'm at. When I am in my pleasure and in my joy, that is also a tuning, an energy, a vibration that the audience can feel. The other day I performed all of my emo, sad, angry songs and I was worried about it, but I went for it. And the audience was emo with me and the audience wailed and cried with me. And I was mind blown by this magic, you know, um, that how I'm feeling can radiate out into the audience. And now here's another example, like, like the one that we don't really want, right? You know, the other day I got up on stage and I just wasn't feeling it. I was having some even vocal pain. I was tired. I don't want to do this. And I still gave the warm eyes. I still send, I was still sending myself love and compassion. And as, as I sang, I told myself, this is okay. It's okay to be in your head right now. It's okay to be tired. That's totally understandable. It's okay. It's all okay. We're human beings. We're not perfect machines. Every show is going to be different. And just to allow who you are to show up on the stage is the most powerful healing thing that you can do and others will see that and they will heal too. If you're performing with a band, ideally your band is supportive. They are not giving you nasty looks on stage. They are not berating you any, in any way. They are not being passive aggressive. They are supportive and loving and uplifting. Um, for example, me and my band, we do right before the show, we all give each other a big hug. Sometimes I'll come to my show. If I'm going through a hard time, I will cry in my band's arms. They will rub my back. They will support me and comfort me and I can show up exactly as I am. 
Um, another way that we create safety is on the set lists. We will put tons of positive affirmations like, you got this girl, I love you, don't be perfect. You know, like fun, silly little things you can put on the set list to like uplift your band and uplift yourself. Um, another way to create safety is rituals. As human beings, we love rituals. They help us to feel safe and to feel in control. So for example, I have a lot of shows this weekend. Um, I'm playing a festival tomorrow and then I'm playing two private shows on the weekend. And so I treat, here is my ritual. I treat show days as sacred, they're sacred. I do not overbook myself. The show is the most important thing. And so show day, what am I doing? I am lathering on the self-care like you wouldn't believe because I have a tendency to get anxious. I, I suppose you could say I have stage fright. Um, it's changed, but that has never really left. Um, so what do I do? I support myself. Um, you know, I make sure I get enough sleep. I'm eating healthy meals. I'm drinking a lot of water. I'm meditating in the morning because this is my thing. I like to meditate. I'll move my body and work out if that feels right. Um, other things that you can do is journal, positive affirmations. Um, right before you go on, you know, like half hour or something or an hour, warm up your voice, stretch, breathe. You can also do what's called the Superman or Superwoman pose. Stand nice and tall, spread out your legs, take up a lot of space, put your, your hands on your hips, take up a lot of space, chest held high, chin up and breathe. You can listen to positive affirmations. You can even tell yourself, what's the worst thing that could happen? What's the worst thing? Uh, has, if you've already performed, think of the worst thing that's happened. Has it been that bad? No. <laughs> My anxiety likes to think it could be way worse than it actually is. And if it has been that bad, okay then, let's try again. Rituals, some people like to do sage, palo santo, pray. Imagine yourself killing it up there, doing so amazing. And lastly, I think I've said this all throughout the video, is work on how you treat yourself and how you talk to yourself. Um, be your own best friend, like make that your goal. Be that person in your life that builds you up, that when you turn to them, they're always gonna say something that makes you feel better or they're gonna try. Like, why can't we be that for ourselves, you know? And so I've been cultivating this in myself as someone who has a tendency to be so hard on themselves. And in the past, I have used judgment and cruelty, really, to push myself forward. But no, 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 no. We know a better way now. You can catch more flies with honey instead of vinegar. It is so true. You can grow and heal a lot quicker through love. It may seem weird, but it's true. You know, if you're working with a small child, you're not gonna be like, again, do it again. You have to do better this time, or I don't know what I'm gonna do with you. You're a piece of shit. You know, like stuff like that. That's not gonna help the child grow. It's just gonna create a traumatized child, right? Um, so we are all children at heart. And the way we talk to ourselves is so important um, because it either creates an environment for growth and it, it, if we're loving on ourselves, it creates a, an environment of expansion and growth and curiosity and safety. Um, if it if we are hating ourselves and having these high expectations and all of that, we are creating a closed environment that feels very unsafe and very scary. Um, and, and just adding that on top of your stage fright already and your, um, you know, your passion to grow your stage presence, adding that kind of thing on top of it, it's just gonna weigh you down and it's gonna just take longer. And maybe sometimes we need to go through that to get to the other side, but maybe you can skip 
some of that and not go through all the pain that I put myself through um, by just instead, every time we berate ourselves, don't berate yourself for berating yourself, but instead say, oh, I did, I was just mean to myself. You could even be excited about it. Say, oh, I was just mean. That wasn't very nice. What could we say instead? And then I will also offer after your performance, when you're ready, try to congratulate yourself on all of the things you did great, even if it was just getting up there and doing it. The mind loves to hone in on the things we did wrong. Oh, I messed up that one note or that bunch of notes or, oh, I said this and it was so cringe. Uh, but you know, if you're up there for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever, I'm sure there are many more moments of amazingness than of those whatever few moments. Um, Cause like, what is stage fright to me? It's like, I'm scared to fuck up. <laughs> I'm scared that I'll die up there or I'll, I'll just break apart and they'll just have to drag my lifeless body off stage or I don't know, <laughs> crazy things like that. Or I just will be terrible. Um, but that often doesn't happen. Uh, and I think I've said everything in my heart that I wanted to share today. And I really hope this helps and I love you. And, um, every day is a new day to start again and to try again. And if I can overcome stage fright, I no longer look like a deer in headlights. Mm. And I'm a, an incredible performer. I would say it's probably one of my top um, incredible qualities. I love this about myself. I am such a great performer. Um, if I can get there, so can you. And this is one of my many stage props. <laughs> we have a song called Sorceress. And I also invite you to like, be like a child. Don't take life so seriously. You're a wizard, you're a sorceress. Um, and uh, I'll just end with showing you some of my stage presence here. You can kind of see the childlike quality that I have. And it's very earnest and real. And uh, my warm eyes. And, and during the song, we stir the sorcerer's pot. We go, so sorceress, hey, ah, you can be my sorceress. Alter all that's lived. If you can be my sorceress, be my sorceress. fun be a kid don't take life too seriously we're here to have fun we're here to learn we're here to grow i release new videos every friday so if you're into it um you should subscribe hit that notification bell um share with anyone you think this could help um i have playlists so check out my playlists and i love you and you're doing great no matter how you show up there on that stage. I'm so proud of you. Even if you don't show up on that stage, I'm so proud of you. You are so worthy and I love you. Did I ever say that? I love you. I'll show you my outfit before you go. I don't know if you can see the shoes. Also like dancing up there. So. Dancing fun. Bye.